Hi, everyone. I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access TV. And I'm Kim Anderson. I'm on the board of MCAT, and I'm the director of programs and grants for Humanities Montana. We'd like to welcome you to this birthday program of yeah. MCAT. MCAT first cable cast from this very cast off garage of the old Missoulian. 29 years ago. Right here? Right yeah. in this oh, space? Oh, goodness, you'll see. Awesome. So what I've done for you, dear viewer, instead of the much-anticipated public service announcements we use in between our guests here. Everyone loves those. Right. <laughs> um, I have a series of clips from uh, sort of the ages of MCAP, but really focusing on those early 90s Day, days. Days of yore. Days of yore, including <laughs> that party. There may oh, be a yeah. bonus and you could see me 29 years ago cleaning up after people. He doesn't look Strange any different. Yeah, not at all. It's so, amazing. Uh, in between I will announce who you might see oh, good. in these clips you see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and say a few things about it. Um, contemporaneously speaking, contemporarily speaking, um, MCAT's big push looking ahead are our summer media camps. If you have um, influence over kids between the ages of 9 and 13, or 13 to 18 for zombie cam, mm -hmm. it may be worth checking out at MCAT.org. You can click on this image of happy campers to get to a registration form for four summer camps that will be held through uh, June and early August. So. Uh, that's my big news. The Saturday animation drop-in is still uh, pretty active, and it will end the weekend before Memorial, Memorial Day weekend. Day, right. Memorial Day weekend, MCAT will have a virtual reality presence, a real presence of virtual reality <laughs> at MissCon, which is a kind oh, of fantasy yeah. gaming huge convention. Play, yeah, which I thought meant playing with your cousin, but it does not. No. It means costume play. And MCAT will be there all weekend long, uh, offering people a free opportunity to check out virtual reality. That's a great idea. Yeah. Very it's, good. I think it's our fourth year doing it. And you've got your program. Well, as, um, as constant viewers know, right. <laughs> two it's weeks ago, well. I teased a little bit about a new program that I just got back um, from a kickoff event in Chico Hot Springs. And um, while working on the weekend isn't great, right. if you're working Chico in Chico Hot, Hot Springs, Springs, it's not too bad. So um, we kicked off a new program we have at Humanities Montana called Gather Round. It's a DIY humanities toolkit. And we are encouraging people to go on our website. You see the Gather Round. You click on that banner, and it will take you to a place that describes the program in greater detail. Um, essentially, we're inviting people to host a humanities event in their home, whether it's a dinner party wow. or a bonfire conversation or cocktails or a barbecue in your backyard, um, and talk about uh, the essays that are contained in a new book that was just published, edited by Onyx Smith and Susan O'Connor oh. on the concept of hearth, what it means, whether you think of um, a, pl a very specific place in the environment as your hearth, Mother Earth as your hearth, um, a group of family members oh. as your hearth. There are lots of different essays. There's a deck of cards that will help you with prompts and quotes. Oh, and, interesting. Um, and you get a little candle and some matches, and it's a totally cool toolkit um, and it's a way to say to people you can do humanities you do do humanities every day in your lives and um, we're going to give you this little kit, kit to help you just do a kind of more slightly more conscious event interesting yeah. and people can do they have to apply? It's or absolutely free. Of... There's a you press okay. a button on the website and they ask you, you know, where should we send the kit? Wow. Essentially. Okay. And um, and that's about it. And there's only 50 of them. So if oh, it okay. sounds first intriguing, first yep, when we run out, we run out. It's a limited edition. Wow, that's brilliant, yeah. you guys. I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. You know, I went to uh, Davidson Honors College fundraiser that had various tables with topics yes. and so there was a leader at each table you know sort of um, piloting conversation mm -hmm. in which they knew quite a bit or, or were very passionate about so very similar hats off humanities Montana. hey thanks Clever. thanks well we better move along yes right? we have because lots of guests it's earth day and we've got a lot of kind of earth 
day themes. They're all Earthlings. They're all Earthlings, not the least of which Jesse Rogers, Development Director, Historical <laughs> Museum of Fort Mozilla. Hi, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so, you were telling me there were three interesting events coming up at the Historical Museum of Fort Mozilla. Three of our bigger events and 10 million other ones. Yeah, right. <laughs> every day. <laughs> every day. What's the most immediate? The most immediate is this Saturday. It's the Forestry Day at the Fort, which is always the last Saturday in April. And it is a very fun event. This is its 23rd, yep, 23rd annual. Wow. I know, at the Fort. Before then, they were doing it through the university uh, mm -hmm. area back in the 70s all the way through today. but. We have it at the Fort in the Gareth Gothrin competition arena, and then of course, like there's the steam power locomotion yes. and the hit miss engines, and then you have competitors from all over the world coming for the pro amateur logging sports competition. It's kind of neat right now. We've got several of the local competitors who kind of come every year who are in the kind of Montana area. They've been in Australia for the past month in the, that competition circuit. Wow. I think they were literally like flying back the past couple days to oh get back gosh. in time for this forestry day. So it really is a world-class event, and people do come from all over, and it's really fun to watch. It's super fun to watch. I remember we recorded it for the fort. I don't know, some years mm -hmm. ago, and I put a little clip on mm -hmm. and talk about a viral thing. Oh, you know, yeah. And maybe in this instance, people were trying to chop a log mm -hmm. as soon as, you know, uh, as fast as they could. Right, yep. And there's other, th are people like shimmying up uh, There's poles? the pole climb, there's multiple different axe chops, there's underhand, there's overhand, there's the double buck and single bucks, which is the cross cut saw oh, competition. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, there's Jack and Jill cross cuts, and it's like so many things. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's constant, and I'm always really happy when everyone walks away with all their fingers. Yeah. <laughs> in each episode, it's very watchable because it seems like this mini drama Mm -hmm. With like a threat of dismemberment, <laughs> right, just right. kind just, of in the back of your just mind. Just a little yeah. tension, yeah. 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 That's why cut. when you see my face at Forestry Day, I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, everyone's still alive. I so need far. to go to the beer garden. Now. Yeah. <laughs> but it still. is a great day of events for families too. It really I is. always we have so my many kids. things for the kids. Yeah. We have little little lumberjack log throwings and just yeah. all sorts of stuff. Oh, that's really cute. And then the museum itself, we have you know the fire lookouts open, the schoolhouse, right. the depot, the train. All these folks are there volunteering at the locations and you know letting the kids ring the bell and all the really kind of cool historic stuff that we have out there. So it's yeah. really just a fun day. The two things that I'm definitely trying to get awareness out this year is there will be events in the um, regional park. I think there's like a lacrosse tournament or oh, something going uh -huh. on over there. And so to get to the actual forestry days, the easy way, which less traffic, would be to come in the back way be beside Larchmont Golf Course and right. Community Medical on Old Fort Road. That, that's the easiest because you can drive right through there. There'll be our admission station with the FFA kids because this is a fundraiser. Uh, all the admission gets split up between the FFA kids and the historical museum. And we have, you know, groups like the Society of American Foresters, the University Woodsman team. So it's a huge collaborative effort. But you can go right through there and then park into the parade ground. So it's right. the easy way. I didn't coming. even know that was the back way. That's the only way I ever come into it's the, the fort. It's the front way for you. For me, it's always yeah. been the front way. Well, of course, these are the other way around the new traffic circle. Yeah. You're saying that because of lacrosse might be a that little That might be too really big. crowded. Right. Now, yeah. is it pricey, Jesse, to go? No, it's oh. $10 a truckload is what I usually say. Oh, wow. We say $10 a family, but really it's as many as you can stuff in the family. <laughs> like going <laughs> yeah, to legs the drive sticking out. In. Right, right. <laughs> um, it's $10 for families, a.k.a. truckloads. Four dollars for adults, three dollars for seniors, and two bucks for students. Oh, Kids twelve great. and under free. Right. And the hours are nine to four on this Saturday, the twenty seventh. April twenty seventh. There'll be food trucks, beer garden, tons of fun for all. It's a good time. You don't have to cook. You yeah. don't. It's going to be a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a ball. Yeah. Yeah, right. I know. Fingers crossed. <laughs> no <Right>. snow. Yeah. <laughs> I think we might safely say we're done with snow. Yeah. Now the second item. We should underscore this for a host of nonprofits yes. in the area. Missoula oh, yeah. Gives on May 2nd and 3rd? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's. I think there's about 160 nonprofits to date signed up. It is 10 days away, people. 
Yeah, oh, just 10 days away. So there's a couple things with Missoula Gives that most people have heard about it at this point, but really, you know, the Historical Museum is a part of it. Lots of nonprofits are a part mm -hmm. of it. It's a huge uh, way that supports with, you know, collaborative generosity from our community, how we can give back to the nonprofits that we love. And there's two ways that I say that people who are, you're listening right now and you'd like to get involved, Find that nonprofit you love and be a fundraising champion. It's mm -hmm. super easy. You just sign in, you make your little page, which literally takes name, email yeah. address, boom, done. You get a little page, and then you can say, hey, I'm going to raise 100 bucks for this nonprofit. I want to help them out. So, hey, Aunt Becky and Pa right. and Pa and everyone, like, help me out. I'm, you know, I have threw in 20 bucks. I need 80 more dollars to help my favorite charity. And that makes it so much easier for us nonprofits who are out there trying. And we feel the love, you know, when yeah. people are like, I want to help you fundraise change. And it's super easy. So contact your organization that you love and be a fundraising charity. And can people do this through their social media? Yep, it's all yeah. about sharing on Facebook, right. sending an email. It's, so you it's, sound like you have to knock on doors. No, it's this super. Is, we share pictures virtual. of our yeah. food for yeah. crying out loud. Let's, <laughs> let's like share something worthwhile. That's right. Instead of taking, <laughs> posting another photo of your cat, right. <laughs> do share this. something do that this. you love. Right. And so Missoula Gives is coming up May 2nd and 3rd. Definitely look into it. Tons of activities. Kick off at Plonk at 5 p.m. on Thursday. That's mm -hmm. always a fun time. Definitely come down. And then throughout the next couple of days, you know, May 2nd and 3rd, right. just share some posts, share the love, volunteer. It's a, it's an awesome day that gives you hope and humanity again. Absolutely. And there's a strong goal, I think. That, Half you know, a million for Missoula. Wow. wow. We can do 500, it. 500,000 within 48 hours. 27. 27 hours. 27, 27 hours. We can do it, <laughs> Missoula. We can yeah. do it. We can do it. Now, the third the thing. thing. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> yes, the third thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, we better. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, the third thing, I'll try to be quick because I might have to come back for all the other things. Yeah, you you will. Yes. Is mark your calendars from May 17th. Go to the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula's Facebook page and click Hello to Old Missoula. It's Missoula's oh, yeah. History Through Art. Oh, you were telling us about this. Sounds so good. Tell everyone uh, watching because it yeah. sounds great. It's a great. very fun twist on history. We have 17 local artists, some amazing artists, and they have volunteered their time and talent to create a piece of artwork that portrays a specific decade of Western Montana's history from about mid 1800s through 1990s with you know some fun categories like uh, Glacier Lake Missoula or Missoula into the future mm -hmm. thrown in. And they will be unveiled and debuted at Ten Spoon Winery on May 17th, 5.30 to 9 p.m. They will be available in a silent auction, so you can take a piece of this incredible history original art home. And you vote for the your favorite piece of artwork, and then that is turned into a Ten Spoon wine label, whichever one wins. So oh, that you so can good. then take a bottle of wine yeah. with a historic, beautiful <laughs> <laughs> art. This, is, this has so, so many, layers. many layers. It's so great. It's yeah. such a great fundraiser. Um, and so is that a, is it a ticketed it price ticketed. to get in? It is a fundraiser. We're trying to make it super fun with lots yeah. of layers. But it's eight bucks a ticket, two for fifteen. Nothing. You can pay at the door, or you can go to either Ten Spoon or the Historical Museum and buy tickets right there. And it, it's helpful to have some sense of how many people are going to show really up. Is. Please buy I, tickets as an event coordinator. So yeah, it drives you nuts to not know. So <laughs> do them a favor. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, some of the artists you've just mentioned. Oh, Ed Jenny, Courtney Blazon, right. Lillian Nelson, Luke Smith. These um, are big names. These are, these are great names. Uh, Gina Morelli Olson, um, more, lots more that I can't remember. 17 also. 17. Yeah. And it's, it's really going to be fascinating. And I can't wait to see how they artistically portray Western Montana. Yeah, and what, what eras Absolutely. they choose and so on. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we've been doing weekly spotlights of our great artists on Facebook. So oh. like the event, check it out. We're, yeah. We're giving little teasers out That's there. That's good. Yeah. Oh, my and gosh. And so to find you guys, you know, because it's a long name, I often say um, Historical Museum of Fort Missoula, the HMFM. HMFM. But, you think that would work for a Facebook search and get people to your page? And stuff? I hope so. I mean, if you if you look Fort Missoula, Fort Missoula, there's only a couple yeah. places out there. Historical Museum, 
Missoula. Fort Missoula. Yeah. <laughs> I love our long name. It's wonderful to type out all the time. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. Right. But Scott, you showed the website so people at home could go there. Because yep. you talked about three things. So like the Historical Museum of Fort Missoula on yes. Facebook so that you can get constant little reminders of all these things that are going yeah. on because mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot more throughout the summer. We I do know. 60 plus events a year. Right. And stay tuned to this show because I can guarantee you Jesse will be back. Right. Uh. <laughs> and we, I guess we better move along there, yes. Jesse. Thank you so much. Thanks. And um, now as I promised your viewer, um, you're going to get a clip which is collective effort it's uh, Andy Thogerson of Andy's Talk Show, Nancy Bluebird Show, Shane and Tyler Show, Naturally Speaking with Eric Johnson, which includes an early picture of um, John Debari. Oh my gosh. Who's now on council. Yeah. Um, and a young Nick Kaufman, and you get to see a very young Tracy Stone Manning. Um, we'll be right back to uh, introduce the new artistic director of Dolce Canto right after this. Okay, camera, where are we here? No, you don't, you bad. All right. Um, okay, Mayor, um, will you get us, will you make the change on the phone? <laughs> Say hi. Say something for, there you go. That's well, uh, it's very nice to be here at the opening of the uh, MCAT uh, celebration, and I wish you all the best in the world. What are the goals and in the future? The, objectives of the, future? the goals and the objectives are totally up to who's ever producing. I mean, they just do a little. Hi, gang. Hi. Well, you're going to go, huh? Thank you, thank you. That's well. Hello, Bill. Our uh, director's office is our four megabytes. Uh... <laughs> And you did. Welcome back, dear viewers. So in that clip, you saw the uh, first executive director of MCAT, Randy Ammon, and uh, one of the people I served on the, bo the initial yeah. board with, Reagan Whitworth, was in that clip. And uh, founding father of MCAT, Ron Wheeler, was also in there. And Richie Doyle. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, of course, was a small, small child at that Yes, I, and I, w <laughs> I started... Uh, uh, you know, 30 years ago, one mm. years ago with MCAT. In diapers. I was 12. Yeah. <laughs> so I would like to introduce our next guests. Um, there is Yong Mao, who is the new artistic director of Dolce Canto. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Michael Marsalek is also with him. And Michael, you're on the board of Dolce Canto. And I'm also a singer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I've been with Dolce for, I guess, about 14 years. Yeah. And I'm on the board of current board of directors as well. So can you tell people what is it? It sounds like sweet singing to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we're a nonprofit organization and a select uh, auditioned choir. Um, typically around 24 voices, uh, varies from year to year a little bit. We started in 2001, so this is our 18th season. Wow. And uh, we've toured the world, sang regular concerts in Missoula. Uh, we had a tour uh, three years ago to uh, South, South Korea. Um, have sung uh, regional tours as well, but perform primarily a couple times every year in Missoula. And then after a national search about a year ago, we, we found Yong Mao, and uh, he's been with us for this our 18th season, and we've got a concert coming up on the weekend. That's great. So the concert's coming up on Saturday, April 27th. Right. I yes. can't remember the venue. It's at uh, St. Francis Xavier Church. <laughs> oh, wonderful. 7.30. We deliberately, um, we, we sometimes are in other venues, but we really liked the idea of being in this space because it's a wonderful room to sing in. It it's is. The acoustics room. are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a very live room, so it's wonderful to hear choral music in there. And, mm -hmm. and we didn't know when we were just talking about this, when, when we originally picked the date, um, the theme of this concert, Young, 
Whispers of Nature. Whispers oh, of it's nature. perfect. <laughs> yeah, and here we are with Earth Day and, yeah. and uh, of course Arbor, Arbor Day, Day. And Arbor Week, and and all and these. This is the uh, Earth Week, so our yes. concert yes. <laughs> really fits the theme. I mean, it really does. How how has your experience in this first year, this first season, as uh, artistic director been? Yeah, it was great, and I think uh, Missoula is. Is, is a tiny place, but mm -hmm. there are so many singers who are so committed to excellent singing. So I really enjoy working here. Great. Well, yeah. we're lucky to have you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's been really fun. We've had a, uh, a chance to you know, work with someone who brings a real depth of, of musical knowledge, but also a real creativity around programming. So mm. Putting together a program like this for the weekend, which all the all the songs, everything we're singing has a thread of the amazing connection that we have as humanity with, with nature. Yes. <coughs> which is a wonderful thing to sing about, you know. And we all have Excuse that me. connection on so many different levels. Because I think at first, I personally, I never lived in a place that is so close to nature. Ah, yeah. Especially here when I, when I open my window, I see snow-capped mountains. Right. That was never the case in my life. <laughs> so that, I thought that yeah, it would be great for me to, to show my appreciation for nature here. So that's why I chose Whispers of Nature. But Whispers is a kind of a, it's a hint. Uh, so we are making the nature human. So what are some so, of the pieces that we're going to get to hear? Oh, we are going to perform, we are thrilled to perform um, a masterwork that is called Whispers on the Prairie Wind. Mm. So this is composed by one of the most sought after composers of our time, uh, Eric Eschenwaltz. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a six movement piece. Oh, wow. uh, it's almost like a novel. There are stories about um, a Legota Sioux legend Lagota Sioux legend. Mm -hmm. So that that that's a legend around North or uh, North and South Dakota. Yeah. So there are stories about having a fire on the prairie, and uh, there is a blizzard. Blizzards. Blizzard. And, yeah. it's so it's a very narrative piece. Yes, it it's a very amazing. narrative. Tons of text, but we really love this piece, the, this huge work, and it's very fun to sing. Mm, yeah. Especially. Um, you know, humanity, I usually find out uh, humanity appears among tragedies and disasters. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is the case for this piece. Sounds yeah. interesting. I think we'll get a better reception now that winter has <coughs> passed as yes, well. Right. People will be more like, oh, yes, whispers of the wind <coughs> on the prairie. And um, are there 24 people that are going to sing on this evening? Well, we're actually joined with another mm -hmm. choir actually oh, for this oh, concert. Yes. We often collaborate with student groups, or it's part of the educational mission of Dolce Canto to collaborate and to do different kinds of things in the community. Um, and this particular concert, we're going to be with the Missoula Community Chorus Chamber Chorale, mm -hmm. and they'll be guesting with us, so joining us for a wonderful piece that we'll sing together. And they're going to do three or four pieces on the program as well, um, under the direction of Dr. Ron Wilcott. So mm -hmm. it's lovely to have them with us uh, for this concert. And then we're at the same time we will uh, we will have uh, other artists to perform with us, oh. including Beth um, Youngblood, mm -hmm. Reed, um, as a worth. Yeah. So some guest yeah. artists who are taking guitar part in yes, the event as well. Guitar, violin, and, yeah. and, piano. Right. and piano. Would you recommend people get tickets at the door? I saw the website up for our viewers. Mm -hmm. Can they purchase tickets right from the website? Yes, tickets are available through the website and also at two local outlets, both at Rock and Rudy's and Fact and Fiction in Missoula, if you want to actually walk up and get a physical right. ticket and don't want to do the <laughs> online thing, yeah. which, is, which is just fine. Um, and we do you know, recommend getting tickets early if you can. Um, yeah. And the, the concert date again is? Saturday night. This coming Saturday. Saturday at 7.30 p.m. 7.30 at yeah. St. Saint Francis. St. Saint Francis. The beautiful poster. We're showing it on oh, the screen yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got a really good graphic of the whispers. Absolutely beautiful. And I'm so concerned, as Kim well knows, that people won't know where to go. So St. Francis Church is on orange, orange and, and pine. 
Right. So right in the northwest yes. corner, you can't miss it really. Right. Yes. It's right across from the tire shop. <laughs> so, it's a beautiful church. And yeah. I did want to mention too that right after the concert on Sunday and Monday, we'll be holding auditions for next year. Oh wow! So if anyone's interested, just go to the website dolcecanto.info. Um, we're uh, often looking for a number of uh, new singers in just about every voice part. So yes. Oh, what a great uh, and, opportunity and women, that would be. Um, yeah. And Young will be holding auditions uh, pretty much right after the concert. Pretty much on Sunday and Monday, next, the coming Monday. And yeah. 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 Oh, that's clever because some people might go on. They'll be so inspired. Yes. <laughs> that they'll be lifted out of the pews right. of the Saint well, Francis and like, Church. And like any organization, you know, we want the planning time as well because oh, of uh, course. as Young is working on the artistic repertoire for next year, <laughs> the board is working on the singers, the plan for developing our concerts, obviously, for our 19th season. Right. Sure, yeah, sure. Oh, it sounds a wonderful opportunity. Yes, well, congratulations on 18 years and our new artistic yeah, director. Welcome. Thank you so much. And look forward to the concert this weekend. Yeah. Thanks for having us. You're Thank most you so welcome. much for having us. You bet. All right, we better move along. Oh, we have now, to save the dragon, but what, where's my cheat sheet what on what they're going to see next? What are we going to see next? Oh, okay, so next, um, I might just mention that we're coming to you from the venerable old garage of the old Missoulian building. Yes. And uh, when MCAT first started, a lot of people took advantage of this garage um, to make shows right out of here. So next, folks at home, are going to see a group of teenagers that did a call-in show. They called their, uh, their show Collective Effort because there were a lot of teens coming and going. And boy, did they put up with some stuff because, <laughs> you know, it's very rare nowadays that you can see an image on television and say, I'm going to talk to that image. And <laughs> Scott, our technical director, also did a show called Wingless Rats. Um, I wonder if I got that on there. Uh, so you. in this clip, you're going to see the work of collective effort. Mm -hmm. Shane and Tyler show. Many people thought the most brilliant thing about their show was it was never called the Shane and Tyler show. It is Shane and Tyler <laughs> Just show. Shane and Tyler. And lastly, uh, conversations with Greg Castall. And we'll be right back. I think I Teresa is Greg. next. Yes. For Save the Dragon. Right yes. after this. Okay. You know, you kind of scare me. Um, my, my name's uh, Andy. I'm Andrus. Piss ass. <laughs> ah! If you want to direct the show, why don't you go back there and do it, okay? Check out my why don't you go show. back there and do it? We're going to take over the show. Ah, it's right. mutiny. Hello. Hey. Hey. <laughs> you. <laughs> to do a development. If you try to develop 160 acres at one time, you're talking millions of dollars in putting in the infrastructure to supply that development. That is one of the reasons a lot of people will use these exemptions to get down to 20 acres. Of, of the process to develop or anyone in the real estate business to actually have a good handle on what it is that actually exists in the community. Therefore, there's no good way to decide if, if this proposed subdivision or any proposed subdivision is uh, indeed needed. What should be held in open space, what can be developed, and at what densities, okay? That sets the pattern for a general guide for what should be done. Then site-specific, you can look at special places for wildlife, special corridors, special places for development, places where there's infrastructure or where it should be extended, where housing should be. And so off went 40-acre chunks. Um, and um, I pay a ridiculously low property tax. I back. am laughing about Tracy. Yeah. She so looks so I, beautiful. I think, dear viewers, you <coughs> saw clip one there. It's possible you saw both. But in that clip, there, there were, I just want to call your attention that Eric Johnson, who started the Missoula mm -hmm. Independent, was hosting a call in show back then on county land use issues. And there you saw a younger. John DeBari, who's yes. on City Council, and Nick Kaufman, also uh, viewers of City Council, will know him from the WGM group. And then Tracy Stone Manning, Tracy. who's into acting, Clark Fork Coalition, mm -hmm. director of the EPA for a time, and um, I know she's working locally now. I think she's with the National Organization. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're shop gossiping, but. Okay. Um, 
That was nice. And we're ready to welcome Teresa. Thank you so much for coming to talk about Save the Dragon. Um, Teresa also oversees the carousel for Missoula, and the park is right next to yes. the carousel. And um, the rumpus is maintaining and expanding that park to be an all abilities, all children park, right? Correct. Right. Um, I think a lot of viewers will remember building Dragon Hollow, which mm -hmm. we did back in 2001. So it's 18 years old. Is it already? Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. I don't believe that either. <laughs> that was a great community effort. It was. And, and we're going to do it again. And so if you were part of it the first time, you might want to do it again. If you didn't get to help the first time, this is a great opportunity. We're going to refurbish because the lifespan of a wooden play area is about 20 years. Of course. So it'll be 18 yeah. this year. We take really good care of it, and Parks and Rec helps us with that. They do the inspections and fix small things for us. But still, the wood, you know, the wood gets old. It starts to crack. There's Lots a lot of, of elements. Happen. We've seen right. it be minus God right. knows what this year. <laughs> you know, yeah, and we're in Montana. Ice and the blowing snow <laughs> and then the baking heat. I and think we it's have a lot of really, really well. small elements out there every day too. So yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> a, lot, a lot going on out there. So we're gonna re we started out with this plan to refurbish. We're gonna replace mm -hmm. a lot of the wood with composite. When we built Dragon Hollow, composite wasn't structural. That technology wasn't right. yeah, available. Yeah, but it is now. So our decking is is tracks, but now we're gonna replace some of the balusters and stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of the old um, equipment that is starting to fall apart, get a little, you know, get cracks in it and stuff. We want to make sure it's always safe and clean. For sure. The kids. And then as long as we're going to refurbish, let's expand. Let's make it bigger. Yeah. So we are going to expand, which will allow us to do a little rearranging and make it an all abilities park. When we built Dragon Hollow, we were told that the engineered wood fiber, the wood chips are accessible. They're really not. Mm, um, yeah. So we're going to do about half of it will be poured in place rubber like you see at Silver Summit right. and a oh. lot of the other parks in town now. Um, some of it will still be poured, will still be the engineered wood fiber, but lots of poured in place. We're going to have it be blue so it's like a moat around the castle. Uh, we have some really cool pieces that we're going to put out there. The swing set will be in the new part. We'll have an expression swing where an adult and child can ride facing each other. Um, regular slat swings and then one of the big pod swings you see everywhere. We're going to have a cozy cocoon, which is a sphere that children can crawl into. You can see them all the time, so you don't have to worry about your kids. But um, especially good for kids with autism mm -hmm. who just need to withdraw sometimes and collect themselves. We're going to have a hill that you can either climb steps, you can climb up on your hands and knees, uh -huh. um, you can climb up laying on your back on a roller board that will pull you up to the top, and then oh, there's a slide okay. on the side. We have a wheel merry-go-round. You can put two wheelchairs on. Oh, that's terrific. And a thing called an Apollo, which is one of these cable jungle gyms you see all over town, except our spins. Oh, and my gosh. Put 35 kids on it at a time. Whoa. So a lot of work going on out there. We need 2,300 volunteers to do it. <gasps> We oh my gosh! Four thousand when we did Dragon Hollow the first time in nine days. We need twenty three hundred in five days this time. And how long will the shifts be? They're about four hours. Okay. Start at eight in the morning. Um, so it's the May fifteenth through the nineteenth. People can sign up at SaveTheDragonMT.com. We've got it up on yes, our screen. Yes, on the screen yep. for the viewer. And we also need tools for them to use. We're asking sure. people if they would lend us their tools for the entire build. Um, we will take really good care of them. If they break, we'll get them fixed before they return them so they don't need to worry about us not treating them gently. And it'll be, you know, we have all these people who need something to work with. Mm -hmm. We all show up without a shovel or a screwdriver. <laughs> We're in a lot of trouble. Right. right. So um, volunteers. So common tools, tools are needed, like Absolutely. shovels, screwdrivers, hammers, those uh, drills that use the battery. Drills. Yep. Oh, they need 65, 65 drills. 65 of those. I've got so one. So you click the tools <clears throat> list. Um, it will tell you what we're looking for, and you can email me and let me know what that is, and I'll put it on my list until we get up to where we need to be. So lots of organizing that needs to be done. The park will be closed, unfortunately, from mm -hmm. May 8th until the 25th. Yeah. The 25th is our birthday, and every oh. year on our birthday we do free rides. Right. So we're going to have Kids Day be the grand grand reopening of Dragon Hollow and free rides for everybody. So it's going to be a great day. Oh, that's wonderful. And that, that final party celebration is May 25th? 25th. Saturday, May 25th. So. 
And this park is well used. Oh I my goodness, yes. I can tell the viewers it is well yeah. used. It's on my um, pedestrian route to home. Mm -hmm. And in the fine weather and even in some colder weather, they're always there. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of them. You know, adults it's with the true. kiddos. Yeah. I mean, partly it's the attraction of the carousel, right? And then maybe for some kids they've done the carousel, but they're not quite ready to go home. Yeah. It's wonderful to have Dragon Hollow just to the west of it, and it's right by the river. It's an ideal location. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 Well, I hope well this is a huge undertaking, but more. I know you'll do it, and um, we can all help make that happen. So yeah. I, Absolutely. I had no idea about the tool part, and goodness I knows, Neil either. has a lot of tools. Yeah, he your can... man's got tools, yeah. and I've got tools <laughs> in yourself. So yes. um, I think you've got two, two contributions That's great. right here. And I just want to say to you before you go that I got to appreciate the carousel in a new role when my granddaughter was here several months ago. My first grandchild uh -huh. got to ride in the carousel, and that was so exciting. Oh, that's great. It was so great. I'm experiencing the same thing in Dragon Hollow with my grandsons. Because uh -huh. my kids were in middle school and high school when we built it. But to go out there with those two little boys and watch them run around and make friends. Yeah. And that's what this whole inclusive thing is about. There you go. Kids of all abilities playing together, and when they get older, they'll be able to work together. Right. And valuing each other. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, it really is. This change of, well, we better go. But I was going <laughs> to say the school district had asked me to do um, tours of nine of their schools. And right. we're starting at the K-5. But ideas about inclusiveness, ideas about not stigmatizing people that may have special needs or different yeah. ways of relating that are neurologically um, wired differently, how to incorporate that without making a big deal of it, and, and it's happening in the school district yeah, architecturally, right. and it just <clears throat> seems like it's really going to work, and people are turning a corner on stigma and how they view difference. Yeah, so absolutely. It's really something worth underscoring. Right. Well, Teresa, thanks so much. Thank you very and much. And good luck. I'll be contacting you about my tools. All right. Yeah, so go to the website and sign up for a yeah. work uh, schedule. Yep. And to donate some tools or loan tools. And, and we're feeding uh, people if they need childcare. We've got oh, that great. covered too. Oh, wow. Just yeah. stick them on the yep. carousel. I'll come back. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no obstacles to being a volunteer. That's right. No. We can make it happen. You bet. Thanks All again. Right. Thank you very much. Um, next, we're going to show you um, a show that um, Christian Ackerman oh, and yeah. Ken Boy did called Ask Scott. You're going to have a little bit of the wild walk wild from when it was popular. first invented by Richie Doyle and Craig Mentier. Mm -hmm. um, Jack Kohlberg did a, for a long time did a music show called Street Legal. And then a little bit of a project I did, or you know, I, I coordinated, say, let's, 21 years ago, wow. when I was MCAT's artist in the high schools called um, How Teenagers Saw Their Perfect Room. Ooh. Yeah. And so next we're going to be coming back and talking about trees in the city of Missoula right after That's this. That's right, it's Earth Day. or check out the website at www.angelfire.com slash film slash Axflex. Thank you for listening. We're going to go out with this. over the ocean, crack them open, get some nice breeze.
lots of windows so you can see out good view not too much in it nothing too fancy maybe a little bit of art some neat looking things you can people that come over can check it out I wouldn't ask for too much nothing too busy nothing too big just the perfect little room and comfortable kick back take a nap whenever you want no TV nice radio CD player some good music in the background that would have to just about be, that just be about it. Here we I'll are. Back. I didn't notice, sorry. He's I'm, organizing his I'm papers. organizing myself. Yes. I would like to introduce our next set of guests, and they are all related to Earth Day. And um, on my left is Karen Sippy, and she represents trees for Missoula. Welcome. Thank Next you. to her is Marie Anderson. She's with the city of Missoula, urban forestry. And at the at the far right, which is shocking. Only geographically, yes. <laughs> Welcome and thank you for being on Missoula Live on this Earth Day, April 22nd. Us. So, um, I thought it was very important to talk about trees yeah. and also to talk about climate. So I think a good place to start might be the trees of, of our city, right? Because my understanding is that there is an inventory of trees in the city that are aging. And a lot were planted all at one time back in the heyday. And before we started the show, we also had, with Jesse Rogers, a historical museum in Port Missoula, yeah. an interesting conversation about how the railroad would lie to prospective inhabitants of uh, the city of Missoula, and they would make up postcards, which showed the town in a much better light than it actually was. <laughs> Some That's of awesome. this included <laughs> wooden sidewalks that didn't exist, so that people were like, Clogging along in the mire to right. go to the mercantile right. or what have you. And then another aspect of the falsehood were the number of Eastern style trees oh. that lined the beauteous streets. Right. Yeah. So people even back then knew that the trees were an asset. Right. And they don't happen by accident. I mean, there's a plan in the city for trees and there are groups that take care of the trees. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're each involved in that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, as the city's representative for the Urban Forestry Division, my job is to maintain that inventory, which we have about roughly 30,000 trees in the inventory currently. Wow. Public trees. Publicly yes. Public owned trees. trees. Yeah. Not the one in your backyard. Correct. This yeah. Is, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. on the exactly. boulevard, which may right. often surprise a homeowner, right, when something goes on, they're like, oh, here's a boulevard tree. Right. <laughs> right. Just because there isn't a boulevard doesn't mean there isn't a city tree yeah. there. All right. <laughs> That's, That's right. always a fun surprise. Uh, that yeah. stretch yeah. between the sidewalk. You need to look at that boulevard tree. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> So, so is there is there a calamity in the sense that we seem to be describing that a lot of trees which are now in later life for a tree yeah. and people don't think of a tree's lifespan but it is there and and were they planted simultaneously and are they all starting to go at one time yes and no okay so, good and it's a lot of it is it's a function of water and care mm. so you know the more care you give these trees the better they do and unfortunately we don't always have that level of care and that level of investment and so and a lot of it, i think it just is lack of education you know people don't realize either they're not from you know such an arid climate where you have to water your trees you not rely on the rainfall or it's just you know people coming and going you know and they're not um as invested in that property so we do have a huge amount of our inventory as Norway maples, um, roughly about, um, let's see, I wrote down my numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can cheat. Yeah, oh, that's, that's good because I already was. Um, <laughs> so we have roughly about the uh, about 35% of the city um, is Norway maples, and they a large percentage of those were planted at the turn of the century. And so they're they're getting up there. You know, we have trees in the city that are 115 years old. Wow. Um, and the ex general lifespan of those urban Norway maples is about 90 years. So we're kind of hitting some of that critical mass where some of those trees that do have, you know, lots of storm damage or, 
you know, years of lack of care are starting to decline and die. Oh, I know. Tough. I am in the university district, right in the epicenter yeah. of that whole area. <laughs> and we take really good care of those trees Thank because you. it changes everything. When you a neighbor lost one two summers ago, mm -hmm. and it it changes the whole ecosystem in your front yard <laughs> without that shade tree. Absolutely. And and so it's it really, really does. Important. And they're doing such a good job of trying trying not to just clear cut the forest and you know really selectively removing trees when they are truly a danger they're mm -hmm. truly dead and replacing them um, as they're removed so it's not just all coming out at one time but mm -hmm. it's going to be it's, it's quite been, a change i'm sure <laughs> and yeah reforestation is uh, you know part of any landscape you know, whether how is that process happening so Basically, it's on a you know citizen request basis. You know, oh. someone calls our office and says, "Hey, my tree isn't looking so great. Could you come out and take a peek at it? And see if there's something that we can do." Mm -hmm. uh, and that's generally how we we find it. Or when we were doing the inventory, we we identified quite a few that way. Yeah. Uh, and then this year, hopefully, fingers crossed, our technology will be working and we can work on our six-year update instead of the five-year. Right. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. Close enough. Yeah, yeah. Right? And Karen, could you tell people watching a little bit about Trees for Missoula? Like, where did it come from? It seems to be, you know, my impression was it a fundraising arm for the Urban Forestry Division, but actually, you know. It's, you know, it's more of an, it's a volunteer nonprofit advocacy group, and we advocate for the urban forest. So, of course, I work very closely with the partners of City Parks and mm -hmm. Rec um, in the Urban Forestry Division, but then I also work with great partners like Climate Smart Missoula and Amy Sillenberg. We work with Invest Health Missoula. Um, and the health department, because trees benefit us everywhere. Sure. Trees benefit our climate, trees benefit our health. So it's been really nice to have great partners get the word out. And so really we're about education, um, advocating for the urban forest, getting the people who make all the decisions to make the right decisions and support our urban forest. But we also have a great volunteer program and we've created um, a VIPs, volunteers in pruning. So we train <laughs> volunteers to formative prune our trees when they're newly planted. So after they've been in the ground two to three to five years, our volunteers go around with our certified arborists from the city <laughs> and we prune these young trees because we have so many trees that our work, our staff, they can only get to the big ones with the sure. bucket trucks and the chainsaws and yeah. so we're able to hit the trees when they're young so that when they're really big they have a great structure and they're safe, oh, wonderful. That's so clever. We also plant trees every October for Neighborwoods Month, Arbor Day Foundation dubbed October Neighborwoods Month. So it. the first two weeks we plant bare root trees with our volunteers. We mostly do them in parks, but this year we followed a um, sidewalk project um, that the city and the health department um, and Invest Health Missoula put together. And it was great fun going into the neighborhoods and following this construction project mm -hmm. and being able to bring beauty into these neighborhoods oh, yeah. with these new trees. So we do a lot of volunteering and advocacy work. I would love people to visit my website and also donate. <laughs> yeah. Scott was showing the Scott website to, to the website folks at yeah, home. Yeah. So they, they can make themselves more familiar with it. I was reading an article just today that said municipality cities should look upon trees as an asset for public health. Right. So that yeah. that having a treat environment was an issue of public health as much as it might be an aesthetic concern. Absolutely. I mean, it actually gets people out moving. People will walk on tree-lined sidewalks. Mm -hmm. They don't want to walk on sidewalks that aren't shaded and they don't have trees. They absorb pollutants in the air, so they're beneficial for people with asthma. Um, they even help pee patients heal quicker in hospitals if they have a view of trees. All of this has been Wild, literally that? founded. Yeah. We, um, Amy and I are doing a project now, it's gonna be in a couple of weeks, we're installing a shade shelter, and she had this concept come from her, um, your sh summer shade, summer smart, which you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, 
<laughs> so there's a lot of intersections with the our urban forest sure. and trees and health, and then you bring in a changing climate, so especially hotter summers, yeah. and mm-hmm. there's a real need for that shade. So um, we can talk more about that. Even the way that we care for our trees may may change over time if our summers are hotter and drier as they're projected to be, and that season goes into August and September, where right. especially September we need to water trees and care for them differently because we need this urban forest as it gets hotter to keep temperatures down. Um, the urban or an urban canopy and trees um, downtown can reduce temperatures by close to even 10 degrees from, uh, you know, if you just put a bunch of pavement and a bunch of buildings down without any trees and you, That's add, right. mm-hmm. you add trees just to the sidewalk. They don't have to be everywhere, but you add that shade and it can just reduce that temperature and make it a lot more tolerable. And then there's the mental health um, aspect to it. You know, we, we are happier and feel better around greenery. Um, and in and the even the mind-body connection, yeah. like people are finding that people are healing faster. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. It's all connected. There's not like mental yeah. health medical health are all the, you know, part of the same. But, but then, yeah, so we, we um, so for, for Climate Smart, we got started uh, a little over three years ago, and we, one of our first projects was a program called Summer Smart, where we're helping our community adapt to a changing climate, which is mostly hotter summers, but especially wildfire smoke, smokier summers. How do we right. deal with that? Um, but for the heat part, we decided that we, we started working with MMW Architects and Home Resource, and then Parks and Rec. Um, and built together, we created this the shade shelter that you might see along the Milwaukee Trail if you're walking just down from a little bit east from the Missoulian. Um, it's sort of an oh, interesting it. architecturally really cool. designed by that by MMW Architects yeah. um, and using reused wood that came to Home Resource. You know, they they try to keep right. things out of the landfill and built a, a shade shelter that you know it doesn't it it just works as shade and then the the architects oriented in the right direction and figure out what, what how it needed to be constructed, um, designed and constructed such that it would provide the right the ample shade in July and August. And it's just been a really nice, adi- nice addition to the Milwaukee Trail. And then as Karen got interested in that shade shelter and the concept, we said, oh, well, you know, there's we can get wood from Home Resource. They don't always have enough. What if we also incorporate it into our next shade shelter some of the urban forestry wood that comes out because again we are having to remove some of oh, the older of course. trees so those that wood is now being <coughs> repurposed into shade shelters we are in about in two three weeks um by the first or second week of may we should have the second of these shelters um installed along the bitterroot spur trail as you go down so oh, we'll have clever. one there and then and again designed by mmw architects um built by home resource and we'll have it all um, up and welded and it's just kind of neat we'll also have some trees at that site um, it's a, it gets pretty barren as you go further south mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. Trail, so we're yeah, trying to you know uh, bring a little art to that area and shade and then um, kind of full circle with both trees and the wood incorporated into mm-hmm. the shelter so it'll be, it'll be great to get that up and then there'll be a third shade shelter even further down along in the new ml at Park. Bellevue Park. Bellevue Park. At Bellevue Park. Park. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, what a great idea. So anyway, it's a neat partnership, and, and Trees from Missoula has <clears throat> been great. We're also working a lot with Parks and Rec to help um, right. and, and, and volunteers to put that all together. So. Oh, it's that's funny. really great. Yeah. So it sounds like people watching there, if they have an interest for, let's say they, they were uh, interested in helping people with tree pruning, they can contact Trees from Missoula and say, hey, you know, I've had some experience. Absolutely. And we, I wouldn't and we train mind. as well. And so, yes, absolutely anyone who wants to help um, the urban forest in any way, they can contact me through the website. May 11th is going to be our next VIP pruning class. Oh, so okay. good to know. Yeah, I'll be teaching summer pruning. So anyone who wants to come learn about it and volunteer, we would love to have them. And if people have questions about how to care for the trees and their and their area and their property, mm-hmm. um, is there a place on the website, on the city website, that yes. tells you that? Yep, if you go to Parks and Rec, uh, to their link, and then down to Urban Forestry, we have mm-hmm. a whole link there. And we're, it's going to be under construction soon. We're going to be redoing the website a little bit, so there'll be some more, more information and more, um, you know, FAQ type. You know, Good, because I mean, I, I don't know as this as the I summer progresses. Mm-hmm. I know how to water them, but uh, other than that, I'm not. But working. I don't know how much to water yeah. them. And I wish, you know, the world of smart devices, everything's yeah. so smart, yeah. you know, like, like the toaster pop and the lights change. We're going we're gonna to invent something. Okay, we do that next. Right. Yeah. 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 Because that. often with trees, you know, where I live, um, 
the landlord, um, old Tom Prada, he's long gone now, but he used to come and, and show me how to put the apricot trees on the trickle. Oh, right. So he was yes. a trickle man. Oh, he nice. was a trickle <laughs> But I can't tell you how many times, you know, I was young, I had lots to do. Uh, <laughs> I would forget sure. and be like, oh my God, how many days has that thing been on the trickle? <laughs> you know? The Trace from Missoula website does have a calendar and we have oh, tree good. minders every month and it tells you how to water, how much to water, how you Excellent. know, how you can feel in the soil for how much water. So you can check that okay. out as well. There's also some really interesting about Missoula and our aquifer that, um, you know, that people don't realize, and that is that our aquifer fairly replenishes itself fairly well. We're doing, um, I'm working with the city of Missoula and the Missoula County, and we're doing a, working on a climate adaptation planning effort. Um, and part of that has been looking into, you know, what is most vulnerable in our community for right. climate change. Sure. And we had a scientist, um, Nick Silverman, he's aff affiliated with the University of Montana. Um, the real quick story is he looked at the the sensitivity of the aquifer to drying, because we are going to project it have these hotter, drier sure. late summers especially. Yeah. And the the quick story is that this aquifer is fairly resilient and it replenishes itself. And so it's we live in an arid climate, but having a trickle on your apricot tea actually isn't really it's it's okay here because of the way our aquifer works we're not it's just relying, going back into it's just the going aquifer, back in right? and it's not, well, yeah. which is very different than living in a community like like maybe Bozeman where it's all mm. all their water comes from um, from the streams and right. from that mm. it doesn't come from an aquifer so we can yeah. water grass we, we don't have to waste it but we can water grass we can water our trees and keep everything healthy and not be so freaked that we're you know that we're burning through our aquifer that's a great thing to know yeah, that I it's really important. But I might point out, in my anecdote, um, the uh, it was on a flat rate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was Wait, you don't want to wait. You, you don't want to wait. I'm still on a flat rate. Yeah. You are. Yeah. No, no. That's I know. <laughs> I mean, that's a consideration too. I think you know that people worry like, oh, it's still pretty minimal, and our roots yeah. are pretty good. I yeah. mean, the benefit of having a tree stay alive because you don't need to water generally. Starting in, you know, we don't need to water year round. It's really those key. Yeah, months. those yeah. key yeah. months yeah. where yeah. you're like, oh, there's the water bill. July, yeah. August, yeah. September, and if you do it efficiently and effectively, you're really not wasting much yeah. water or money. It's, you're not just having an open hose out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So we also have different ways and methods to water efficiently um, and good. so that you aren't wasting water yeah. or money. Yeah, so, so there's all this evaporation. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and wasting, exactly. wasting energy because right. oh, really yes. our, the water, it's there's a lot of energy embodied in moving our water around, pumping it out. Yeah. Oh, sure. sure. Down. sure. So, so you, do, you don't want to waste it, that. but I just want to. She always I know. reminds it's, me of It's all she connected. Yes. Oh, <laughs> now we have two minutes. See, I told you once we got started on one. I know. But I think it's such a perfect day to remind everybody that, I mean, we're, we're not always conscious of it, but part of what makes Missoula, Missoula such a beautiful, um, comfortable, lovely home for all of us is our trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and you know, the, the farmers asset. market's starting up pretty soon in what two weeks, and there's yeah. you can buy you can buy trees, you can buy native shrubs, you can do a lot in your own home or business right. and things. Yeah. 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 Well, thank, thank you so you much for coming you. on the show. Oh, and I wanted to mention to people watching, it is Arbor Week, yes. and I know a lot is going on at university. There's like a tour. Ken oh. Stoll, do you work with him? Ken Stoll, I used to, yes. Oh, used to. Wow, he is just doing up a storm. <laughs> I asked Ken to be on the show, and he's well, like, no, no, I'm running around. It's crazy. <laughs> Trees from Missoula is partnering with them for oh, the good. events. And actually, yeah. Amy is going to be on my panel oh, Thursday perfect. night with Nick Silverman yeah. and Jamie Kirby from the DNRC. Now, where is that going to be, the and panel? And that's at uh, ISB 110, the inter inter Interdisciplinary Science Building and Campus. Okay. UN. Uh, uh, at UN. Okay. And is that information on your website? It is on the, it's on Facebook, but it's also on the University of Montana Events website. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. it's on Climate Smart Missoula's website too. Yeah, oh, I, I'm oh, sorry okay. I didn't mention that sooner I meant yeah. to and it just slipped my mind. No, um, there'll be a whole bunch of things. Zero, zero, oh, now zero, he's going to cut us off in the Well, can you show a clip? Just show one little clip to send us out. So for <laughs> Incan, I'm Joel Baird. And I'm Kim Anderson. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in May. Yeah.
Uh, welcome to Labor Vision. It's a monthly live call and show with issues that affect Missoula and the labor community. And I will see Missoula citizens as a whole. Tonight we have uh, Mike Bennett, who's the Ward 1 councilman. And he was elected in 92, and he's been serving since 93. Why don't we start off? Well, first, I should mention that if you'd like to, to have a, if you have a question about the city council or Ward 1 of the Rattlesnake, you can call in at 542-6228, 542-MCAT. And Mike, I think I want to start off, and since, uh, since you started, you know, how is your feeling towards the city council now than before you, before you started running? Well, I don't think my, uh, my basic uh, opinions have changed or philosophy. You, it's a learning experience being on it. You get to understand a little bit more about the, uh, you know, the nuts and bolts aspects of government, but as far as uh, philosophical issues and some of the larger policy issues, I, uh, I, I don't think that uh, being on the council really has, has changed my basic feelings or attitudes very much. It's, it, it's still an important job, and it's, it's one of trying to represent uh, the citizens who, who generally don't have the time to go down and, and uh, sit in on the committee meetings and, and uh, keep track of everything that government does. Well, it does take quite a, quite a bit of time, though, to, to, get to, to know all the procedures and all the budget procedures, and it is quite complicated, isn't it? Yeah, what, the, probably the, the most uh, interesting thing is, uh, in terms of learning that I've gone through was the land use issues. So much of that isn't based on uh, simply your opinions of things. It's based on uh, a lot of judicial requirements, legislative requirements. Uh, there's uh, findings of fact that you have to have in hand if you're going to vote a certain way on these things. And you have it, you sh just about should be a lawyer before you, you try to do it. but. Uh, fortunately, no, no, none of us are, so we've <laughs> kind of done it uh, from scratch. But uh, it, it is not something that you can just go in and, and uh, fly completely by the seat of the pants. Now, you're from the Rattlesnake. How, how has the issues changed over the years from when you started to the issues now? Well, the Rattlesnake is, uh, I guess, sort of like, uh, I don't know, as one of the old German chancellors said about uh, uh, the Balkans, they generate more history than they can consume internally, and we, we generate more politics, I think, than we can consume internally. But uh, the issues uh, obviously have gone past annexation. That was the, the thing that uh, really was the, the firestorm in the rattlesnake when we first came in. At this point, that's pretty much a, a dead horse for most of the valley. We're in the city, and, and uh, you know, we need to accommodate that as best we can. 